the cross of Jesus Christ is a watershed point for so many issues in theology and ethics. So was the cross a tragic event that God turned for good, or was it a loving event that God planned for good? Which side of the watershed you choose to kayak down will decide the trajectory of your entire theological system that you based your life on. It's that important, as John Piper explains in a sermon clip from his 2011 sermon on John chapter 11. Here's a clip of what he said. God did not just turn the national crisis for Israel's good and our good. He was in it from the start, planning it. See the difference? Does God see a difficult situation and fix it, turn it, or is he in it from the start, managing it, planning it? And I'm arguing that's the case because of what this text says. So notice carefully what John says about Caiaphas' words. Verse 50. It's better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. And then John says something amazing in verse 51. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied. He prophesied of God's accord, not his own. He prophesied of God's accord, not his own. Now think that through. God brought these words out of Caiaphas' mouth. God put them there. God has a meaning. At one level, these are Caiaphas' words, and his meaning is one thing. At another level, these are God's words, and his meaning is another thing. And the point I'm making here is, These words sealed Jesus' death. These words were the death warrant of Jesus. God spoke these words. Caiaphas wanted Jesus dead and out of the way, so he spoke these words. And Jesus wanted Jesus, God wanted Jesus dead and risen and reigning and triumphant over the world. And he spoke these words. He didn't arrive on the scene here late and say, oh my, what will I make of these words? He spoke these words. That's amazing. I mean, my whole life is based on things like that. You think your troubles? God says, oh no, what will I make of that? That horrible mess. I'll figure it out. That's not my God. Caiaphas prophesied, that is, he spoke God's words, and God said, it is better for you that one should die for the people and that the whole nation should not perish. God said, better that he die. God said, better that he die. God said, better that he die. Better indeed, better than any plan in the universe infinitely better that he die. I love God. I love God. He did this with you in mind. Therefore, the death of Jesus was not mainly a tragic set of events which God turned for good. It was a loving set of events that God planned for good. God himself served the death warrant on his son. He didn't just predict it, he unleashed it. This word of prophecy tracked Jesus down to Gethsemane and put him under arrest. There was no escape because God had spoken. Listen carefully. Inside the universal offer of salvation, which we know from John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world, whoever, Inside the universal offer of salvation, God has a particular design in the death of his son to convert the elect, the scattered children of God, and bring them to himself. So within 
the glorious open door sent to the world, whosoever will may come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes, whoever believes may not perish but have eternal life. Within that glorious proclamation which we should announce everywhere we go, there is a design as well. Don't limit Christ's purposes in the cross to providing an opportunity for all to be saved. Don't limit the work of the cross to that. That's true, and gloriously so. It unleashes us in the neighborhood. It unleashes us among the nations to look into every eyeball and say, he loved you and gave his son so that if you will but believe, you will be saved. But he did more than that, and that's here. The more is here, and the more is by your blood you ransomed a people. You are gathering a people called the children of God who are out there, chosen before the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1, 4, for adoption, and you have died to bring them. And you will do what you died to do in regard to your elect. You will get that done, and there will be one people infallibly. Christ died not only to offer the world salvation. He died in order to bring his people to himself, to overcome their rebellion and gather them omnipotently to himself. Beautifully put. This is an incredibly important doctrine. And of course, you can find the entire message online at DesiringGod.org. This message is titled, Jesus Died to Gather the Children of God, preached on October 29th, 2011. This clip was found by Donnie from New Mexico, who sent it in to us. Thank you, Donnie, for the clip. And uh, John Piper returns tomorrow, and we're going to talk about four reasons why you should consider sharing your personal struggles with your non-Christian friends. That should be an interesting discussion. I'm your host, Tony Ranke, and I'll see you tomorrow on the Ask Pastor John podcast.